The chair now recognizes Mr. Fallon from Texas for five minutes. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Words mean things, or at least they should. Here's Joe Biden's words from August 28, 2019. First of all, I have never discussed with my son or my brother or anyone else anything to do with their business. From September of the same year, I have never spoken to my son about his overseas business dealings. October, same year, quote, I don't discuss business with my son. Were Joe Biden's words true? No, they were false. So why did he lie repeatedly? In an interview back in 2019 with The New Yorker, even Hunter admitted that he talked to his dad about business, specifically Burisma. Many of Hunter Biden's business associates have testified Joe Biden met with them. Two of the ones closest to Hunter, Rob Walker and Devin Archer, were among them. So they not only spoke to him, they took, a lot of the business association, uh, associates took photos with him. They played golf with him. They gave, Joe Biden gave them White House tours. He wrote letters of recommendation for their children and shared fancy dinners as well. So let's also talk about patterns. Yuri Luzkov and Yelena Baterina. They are Russian, they're married, they were married, Russian oligarch billionaires. Michael McFaul, the U.S. ambassador to Russia, ID Luzkov as being corrupt. Yelena Baterina wires $3.5 million to Hunter Biden. Soon thereafter, who does she have dinner with? Then Vice President Joe Biden. Kenez Rashkov, Rakishev, rather, and Karim Mazumov, Kazakhstani nationals. Mazumov used to be the prime minister, he's now in prison. Rakishev wires $142,300 to Hunter Biden. The very next day, Hunter Biden buys a Porsche for $142,300. And then soon after, who do you think Kenny's Rakachev has dinner with? Say it with me. Then Vice President Joe Biden, Adam Pazarsky and Mikolo Zolchevsky, the CEO and CFO of Burisma. U.S. Ambassador to Ukraine, Jeffrey Pyatt, calls Zolchevsky a poster child of corruption. Those two fellas paid Hunter Biden's shell companies a total of $3.3 million. And who do you think Vedan Pazarsky had dinner with? Again, say it with me all at once. Then Vice President Joe Biden. So here's a pattern. You have crooked foreigners that deliver pallets of cash to the Bidens, and then they have dinner with Joe. And apparently Joe Biden is one hell of an expensive dinner date. And if that's not selling political access, I don't know what is. My Democratic colleagues report ad nauseum when they talk to the media that there's no direct evidence linking Joe Biden to his son's crimes. Really? This is a FD-1023, which is used by the FBI when confidential informants give them information. This 1023 is only as good as the source. It could be garbage or it could be gold. The FBI describes this source as somebody that is highly reliable and very trust trustworthy. In fact, they've worked with him for over a decade and paid him well over $100,000. What he has given to them is always checked out. This, ladies and gentlemen, is gold. Consider this in, with weight and gravity. So what does this say? I don't know what the confidential informant's name is, so I'm going to call him Ivan. Ivan is not his real name. But Ivan describes Vadam Pazarsky directly admitting to him in a confidential conversation that they hired a not-so-smart Hunter Biden to protect us, quote, through his dad from all kinds of problems. Then Ivan speaks directly to CEO Zolchevsky, and Zolchevsky confides that Hunter Biden will take care of those corruption issues through his dad. Zolchevsky is being investigated by Viktor Shokin, a Ukrainian prosecutor. Joe Biden suddenly begins to call for Shokin's removal. Now, Ivan is also told by Zolchevsky that it, will, it cost him $5 million to pay one Biden and $5 million to pay the other. This is direct evidence of naked corruption and bribery. Zolchevsky also admitted to Ivan that both Bidens pushed him to pay them and to keep Hunter Biden on the board. Please keep in mind, these were confidential conversations. Also interesting that Zolchevsky referred to Biden as the big guy, and I doubt he knows Tony Boblinski. Shokin seized two homes, land, and a Rolls Royce from Zolchevsky. When he was fired, the Ukrainian president admitted in a phone call to none other than Joe Biden that he, Shokin didn't do anything wrong, but at your behest, we fired him. And then a billion dollars of aid that was being withheld was given to Ukraine. And lastly, after Shokin was fired, Hunter Biden and the other members of the Burisma board wrote a letter to the new prosecutor demanding that Zolchevsky, the investigation into Zolchevsky ended. And you know what? Shockingly, it did. The message was sent and the Bidens delivered. Mr. Dubinsky, in your experience in financial investigations, 
you, you, follow, quote unquote, you follow the money. If you were investigating this and looking at $5 million payment from Burisma to Joe Biden, what kinds of information or patterns would you be looking for? Well, I'd, I'd want to know who, what, when, where, and why. What's going on? Why is, why is the money moving? What's it for? What's the substance behind it? Um, and, and talk to people. Look at documents and talk to people. That's what we do in investigations. I, I would venture to say everybody in this chamber, if they were the CEO of a company and they saw mo money moving like that within their own company, they'd want to get to the truth. They'd want to find out why is that money moving? Why is somebody paying that money out? Those are the questions that need to be asked and get to the bottom of. Mr. Mr. Chairman, my, Mr. My Chairman, I have another unanimous consent. Chair recognizes Mr. Timmons from South Carolina. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Uh, I'm going to try to simplify this for the American people. My colleagues across the aisle allege that this inquiry is improper and that this hearing is improper, but that could not be further from the truth. We now have enormous amounts of evidence to indicate that Hunter Biden was engaged in nefarious and illegal activities with foreign nationals from China, Romania, Ukraine, Kazakhstan, and Russia, all while making millions of dollars doing so. We don't even know the full extent of it yet. To date, we've discovered up to 25 million in payments, and that's without even having Hunter Biden's personal bank records. The question is this, though. This is the question. This is why we're here. What did Joe Biden know and when? Due to the evidence that we've found to date, Speaker McCarthy appropriately initiated an impeachment inquiry to give us additional tools to get the answer to that question. Based on the circumstantial evidence we have, the laptop, the whistleblower, shell companies, bank records, and testimony from Devin Archer, this Congress has a duty to further investigate whether Vice President Joe Biden was an affable, loving father, simply taken advantage of by his delinquent son, or a knowing participant who was complicit in the scheme and financially compensated for his role. That is why we are here today, to answer that simple question, to determine if our current president is compromised. Look, this scheme is complicated. You get all these countries and all these different roles different people played. But, but the plan is simple and repeated often. A foreign client has a problem. The foreign client pays a Biden. The vice president leverages influence to force favorable outcomes for the client. The Biden family earns their fee. That's the scheme. We've seen it played over and over. As we continue to investigate all of this wrongdoing, I've put a lot of time trying to figure out how all this got started. In 2014, it seems that Vice President Biden, after four decades of public service and thinking he would never hold public office again, started down a slippery slope. Perhaps he just wanted to help his struggling son. Maybe he never intended to sell policy decisions and for the Biden family to get millions of dollars. But there's mounting evidence that suggests that, he, that that may very be what has happened. It all began in the spring of 2014, though. Hunter Biden gets his father to have dinner with foreign nationals and his business partner, Devin Archer, in Georgetown. The foreign nationals attending this dinner were Karim Masimov, the Prime Minister of Kazakhstan, Kenneth Rakashev, a Kazakhstani oligarch, Yelena Baterina, a Russian oligarch who also happened to be the wife of the mayor of Moscow. We know that beginning in early 2014, Baterina sent a $3.5 million wire to one of Hunter Biden's shell companies, and Rakashev wired $142,300 to yet another shell company for Hunter Biden to buy a Porsche. We have the bank records to prove this. So the logical question here is, what was this money for? What were the goals of those payments? For Baterina, it seems, her motives were clear. She knew that uh, Russia was going to was going to invade Crimea, and as a response to the invasion, the Obama administration would inevitably announce sanctions and visa bans. Who's left off the list of, that the Obama administration published? Who was noticeably missing? Elena Baterina, the richest woman in Russia, the woman who wired Hunter Biden $3.5 million just days earlier. That's just a coincidence. For Rakashev, the motive was to leverage Biden's influence to aid in the facilitation of the sale of Kazakhstani state oil rights to Burisma. And guess what? In December of the same year, Rakashev's oil company in Burisma joined a Chinese Communist Party-linked company and announced a deal. Everyone got rich. Again, another amazing coincidence. These are only the first two of dozens of examples of the scheme. A foreign client has a problem. A foreign client pays a Biden. Vice President leverages influence to force a favorable outcome for the client. Biden family earns their fee. Our work over the last nine months warrants additional scrutiny of Biden family members and business associates and requires additional tools at our disposal to uncover whether Joe Biden was complicit. Again, the purpose of this investigation. Our next steps are to subpoena additional documents that will give context to these transactions to help determine Joe Biden's culpability. We're going to subpoena Hunter Biden's personal bank records. Various business records, such as invoices and contracts, to clarify what these payments were for. Secret service logs detailing movement patterns of then Vice President. The list goes on and on. And again, I just want everybody to remember, we're doing this because the Department of Justice, the FBI, and the IRS refuse to do their job. 
And we have evidence just in the last week that they're actively concealing these possible crimes. If we discover that Joe Biden was taking half of Hunter Biden's income, like Hunter told his daughter in a text message, I hope that my Democrat colleagues will put politics aside, do the right thing, and join us in impeaching 